Act Three of The Alchemist by Ben Jonson. Act Three, Scene One. The lane before Lovett's house. Enter Tribulation Wholesome and Ananias. These chastisements are common to the saints, and such rebukes we of the separation must bear with willing shoulders, as the trials sent forth to tempt our frailties. In pure zeal, I do not like the man. He is a heathen, and speaks the language of Canaan, truly. I think him a profane person indeed. He bears the visible mark of the beast in his forehead, and for his stone it is a work of darkness, and with philosophy blinds the eyes of man. Good brother, we must bend unto all means that may give furtherance to the holy cause. Which his cannot, the sanctified cause, should have a sanctified cause not always necessary the children of perdition are oft times made instruments even of the greatest works beside we should give somewhat to man's nature the place he lives in still about the fire and fume of metals that intoxicate the brain of man and make him prone to passion where have you greater atheists than your cooks or more profane or choleric than your glass men more anti-christian than your bell-founders what makes the devil so devilish i would ask you satan our common enemy but his being perpetually about the fire and boiling brimstone and arsenic we must give i say unto the motives and the stirrers up of humours in the blood it may be so when as the work is done the stone is made this heat of his may turn into a zeal and stand up for the beauteous discipline against the menstruous cloth and rag of rome we must await his calling and the coming of the good spirit you did fault to upbraid him with the brethren's blessing of heidelberg weighing what need we have to hasten on the work for the restoring of the silenced saints which ne'er will be but by the philosopher's stone and so a learned elder one of scotland assured me arum potabile being the only medicine for the civil magistrate to incline him to a feeling of the cause and must be daily used in the disease i have not edified more truly by man not since the beautiful light first shone on me and i am sad my zeal hath so offended let us call on him then the motion's good and of the spirit i will knock first knocks peace be within the door is opened and they enter scene two a room in love wit's house enter subtle followed by tribulation and ananias o oh, you come twas time your threescore minutes were at last thread you see and down had gone furnace acedia turris circulatorius lembic boltshead retort and pelican had all been cinders wicked ananias art thou returned nay then it goes down yet sir be appeased he is come to humble himself in spirit and to ask your patience if too much zeal hath carried him aside from the due path why this doth qualify the brethren had no purpose verily to give you the least grievance but are ready to lend their willing hands to any project the spirit and you direct this qualifies more and for the orphan's goods let them be valued or what is needful else to the holy work it shall be numbered here by me the saints throw down their purse before you this qualifies most why thus it should be now you understand have i discoursed so unto you of our stone and of the good that it shall bring your cause showed you beside the main of hiring forces abroad drawing the hollanders your friends from the indies to serve you with all their fleet that even the medicinal use shall make you a faction and party in the realm as put the case that some great man in state he have the gout 
while you but send three drops of your elixir, and you help him straight. There you have made a friend. Another has the palsy or the dropsy. He takes of your incombustible stuff. He's young again. There you have made a friend. A lady that has passed the feet of body, though not of mind, and hath her face decayed beyond all cure of paintings, you restore with the oil of talc. There you have made a friend, and all her friends. A lord that is a leper, a knight that has the bone-ache, or a squire that hath both these, you make them smooth and sound, with a bare fricassee of your medicine. Still you increase your friends. Ay, it is very pregnant. And then the turning of this lawyer's pewter to plate at Christmas. <gasps> Christ died, I pray you. Yet Ananius. I have done. Or changing his parcel gilt to massy gold. You cannot but raise you friends. Withal to be of power to pay an army in the field, to buy the king of France out of his realm, or Spain out of his Indies. What can you not do against Lord spiritual or temporal that shall oppone you? Verily, tis true. We may be temporal lords ourselves, I take it. You may be anything, and leave off to make long-winded exercises, or suck up your ha huh and hum in a tune. I not deny, but such as are not graced in a state, may, for their ends, be adverse in religion, and get a tune to call the flock together. For to say sooth, a tune does much with women, and other phlegmatic people. It is your bell. Bells are profane. A tune may be religious. No warning with you. Then farewell my patience. Slight it shall down, I will not be thus tortured. I pray you, sir. All shall perish, I have spoken it. Let me find grace, sir, in your eyes. The man, he stands corrected, neither did his zeal, but as yourself allow a tune somewhere, which now, being toward the stone, we shall not need. No, nor your holy vizard, to win widows to give you legacies or make zealous wives to rob their husbands for the common cause, nor take the start of bonds broke but one day, and say they were forfeited by providence. Nor shall you need or a night to eat huge meals to celebrate your next day's fast the better, the whilst the brethren and the sisters humble debate the stiffness of the flesh, nor cast before your hungry hearers scrupulous bones, as whether a Christian may hawk or hunt, or where the matrons of the holy assembly may lay their hair out, or wear doublets, or have that idol starch about their linen. It is indeed an idol. Mind him not, sir. I do command thee, spirit of zeal, but trouble to peace within him. Pray you, sir, go on. Nor shall you need to go libel gainst the prelates, and shorten so your ears against the hearing of the next wire-drawn grace nor of necessity rail against plays, to please the aldermen who daily custard you devour, nor lie with zealous rage till you are hoarse. Not one of these so singular arts. Nor call yourselves by names of tribulation, persecution, restraint, long patience, and such like, affected by the whole family or wood of you, only for glory and to catch the ear of the disciple. Truly, sir, they are ways that the godly brethren have invented for propagation of the glorious cause, as very notable means, and whereby also themselves grow soon and profitably famous. Oh, but the stone! All's idle to it! Nothing! The art of angels nature's miracle, the divine secret that doth fly in clouds from east to west, and whose tradition is not from men, but spirits. I hate traditions. I do not trust them. Peace. They are popish all. I will not peace. I will not. Ananias? Please the profane, to grieve the godly. I may not. 
Well, Ananias, thou shalt overcome. It is ignorant zeal that haunts him, sir, but truly else a very faithful brother, a botcher and a man by revelation, that hath a competent knowledge of the truth. Has he a competent sum there in the bag to buy the goods within? I am made guardian, and must for charity and conscience sake now see the most be made for my poor orphan, though I desire the brethren two good gainers. There they are within. When you have viewed and bought em, and tain the inventory of what they are, they are ready for projection. There's no more to do. Cast on the medicine, so much silver as there in tin there, and so much gold as brass, I'll give it to you by and wait. But how long time, sir, must the saints expect yet? Let me see. How's the moon now? Eight, nine, ten days hence. He'll be silver potate. Then three days before he citronize. Some fifteen days the magisterium will be perfected. About the second day of the third week in the ninth month. Yes, my good Ananias. What will the orphan's goods arise to, think you? Some hundred marks, as much as filled three cars, unladed now. You'll make six millions of them. But I must have more coals laid in. How? Another load, and then we have finished. We must now increase our fire to Ignis Ardens. We are past Femus Equinus, Palni, Cisneris, and all those lenter heats. If the holy purse should with this draught fall low, and that the saints do need a present sum, I have a trick to melt the pewter. You shall buy now instantly, and with a tincture make you as good Dutch dollars as any are in Holland. Can you so? Ay, and shall bide the third examination. It will be joyful tidings to the brethren. But you must carry it secret. Ay, but stay, this act of coining, is it lawful? Oh, lawful! We know no magistrate. Or if we did, this is foreign coin. It is no coining, sir. It is but casting. Ha! You distinguish well. Casting of money may be lawful. It is, sir. Truly, I take it so. There is no scruple, sir, to be made of it. Believe, Ananias, this case of conscience he is studied in. I'll make a question of it to the brethren. The brethren shall approve it lawful, doubt not. Where shall it be done? Knocking without. For that will talk anon. There's some to speak with me. Go in, I pray you, and view the parcels. That's the inventory. I'll come to you straight. Exhort tribulation and Ananias. Who is it? Face, appear. Enter face in his uniform. How now? Good prize? Good pox! Yon cost of cheater never came on. How then? I have walked around till now, and no such thing. And have you quit him? Quit him? And hell would quit him too, he were happy. Slight, would you have me stalk like a mill jade all day for one that will not yield us grains? I know him of old. Oh, but to have gulled him would been a mastery. Let him go, black boy, and turn thee that some fresh news may possess thee. A noble count, a don of Spain. My dear delicious compere, and my party bod, who has come hither private for his conscience, and brought munition with him. Six great slops, bigger than three Dutch boys, besides round trunks furnished with pistolets and pieces of eight, will straight be here, my rogue, to have thy bath, that is the color, and to make his battery upon our dole, our castle, our sink port, our Dover pier, our what thou wilt. Where is she? She must prepare perfumes, delicate linen, the bath in chief, a banquet, and her wit, for she must milk his epidus. Where is the doxy? I'll send her to thee and but dispatch my brace of little John Leydens, and come again myself. Are they within, then? Numbering the sum. How much? A hundred marks, boy. Exit. Why, this is a lucky day. Ten pounds of mammon, three of my clerk, a porterage of my grocer, this of the brethren besides reversions, and states to come in the widow, and my account, my share to-day, will not be bought for forty. Enter doll. What? Pounds, dainty Dorothy, art thou so near? Yes, say, Lord General, how fares our camp? As with the few that had entrenched themselves safe by their discipline against a world, 
Dole and laughed within these trenches and grew fat with thinking on the booties, Dole brought in daily by their small parties. This dear hour a doughty dawn is taken with my Dole, and thou mayst make his ransom what thou wilt. My Ducibel he shall be brought here fettered with thy fair looks before he sees thee, and thrown in a down bed as dark as any dungeon, where thou shalt keep him waking with thy drum, thy drum, my dole, thy drum, till he be tame, as the poor blackbirds were in the great frost, or bees are with a basin, and so hive him in the swan-skin coverlid and cambric sheets till he work honey and wax, my little god's gift. What is he, general? An Atalanto, a grandy girl. Was not my dapper here yet? No. Nor my drugger? Neither. A pox on them. They are so long a furnishing such stinkers would not be seen upon thy festival days. How now? Have you done? Done. They are gone. The sum is here in bank, my face. I would we knew another chapman now would buy him outright. Slid, Nab shall do it against he have the widow to furnish household. Excellent. Well thought on. Pray God he come. I pray he keep away to our new business the o'er past. But, Face, how camest thou by this secret don? A spirit brought me the intelligence in a paper here, as I was conjuring yonder in my circle. For surely I have my flies abroad. Your bath is famous, subtle, by my means. Sweet Dole, you must go tune your virginal, no losing of the least time, and do you hear good action, firk like a flounder, kiss like a scallop, close, and tickle him with a mother tongue. His great verdugership has not a jot of language. So much the easier to be cousin to my dolly. He will come here in a hired coach, obscure, and our own coachman, whom I have sent as a guide, no creature else. Knocking without. Who's that? Exit, doll. It is not he. Oh, no, not yet this hour. Re-enter, doll. Who is't? Dapper, your clerk. God's will, then, Queen of Fairy, on with your tire. Exit, doll. And, doctor, with your robes, let's dispatch him, for God's sake. "'Twill be long. "'I warrant you, take but the cues I give you. "'It shall be brief enough. "'Goes to the window. "'Slight, here are more. "'Abel, and I think the angry boy, "'the heir that fain would quarrel. "'And the widow? "'No, not that I see. Away. "'Exit subtle. Enter dapper. "'Oh, sir, you are welcome. "'The doctor is within a moving for you. "'I have had the most to do to win him to it. "'He swears you'll be the darling of the dice.' He never heard her highness dope till now. Your aunt has given you the most gracious words that can be thought on. Shall I see her grace? See her, and kiss her too. Enter Abel, followed by Castril. What, honest Nab, has brought the damask? Tis well done, Nab. Thou wilt bring the damask too? Yes, here's the gentleman, Captain, Master Castril. I have brought to see the doctor. Where's the widow? Sir, as he likes, his sister, he says, shall come. Oh, is it so? Good time. Is your name Castrol, sir? Ay, and the best of the Castrols. I'd be sorry else by fifteen hundred a year. Where's the doctor? My mad tobacco boy here tells me a one that can do things. Is he any skill? Wherein, sir? To carry a business, manage a quarrel fairly, upon fit terms. It seems, sir, you are but young about the town that can make that a question. Sir, not so young, but I've heard some speech of the angry boys, and seen em take tobacco, and in his shop, and I can take it too, and I would fain be one of em, and go down and practice in the country. Sir, for the duello, the doctor, I assure you, shall inform you to the least shadow of a hair, and show you an instrument he has of his own making, wherewith no sooner shall you make a report of any quarrel, but he will take the height on it most instantly, and tell in what degree of safety it lies in, O mortality and how it may be borne, where in a right line, or a half-circle, or may else be cast into an angle bluffed, if not acute, and this he will demonstrate, and then rules to give, and take the lie by. How to take it? Yes, in oblique he'll show you, or in circle, but never in diameter. The whole town study his theorems, and dispute them ordinarily at the eating academies. But does he teach living by the wits, too? Anything whatever. You cannot think that subtlety... But he reads it. He made me a captain. I was a stark pimp, just of your standing, before I met with him. It is not two months since. I'll tell you his method. First, he will enter you at some ordinary. No, I'll not come there. You shall pardon me. For why, sir? Well, there's gaming there, and tricks. Why, would you be a gallant, and not game? Aye, twill spend a man. Spend you? 
It will repair you when you are spent. How do they live by their wits there that have vented six times your fortunes? What, three thousand a year? Aye, forty thousand. Are there such? Aye, sir, and gallants yet. Here's a young gentleman is born to nothing. Points to Dapper. Forty marks a year, which I count nothing. He is to be initiated and to have a fly of a doctor. He will win you by irresistible luck within this fortnight enough to buy a barony. They will set him upmost at the groomed porter all the Christmas, and for the whole year through at every place where there is play, present him with a chair, the best attendance, the best drink, sometimes two glasses of cannery, and say nothing, the purest linen and the sharpest knife, the partridge next his trencher, and somewhere the dainty bed in private with the dainty. You shall have your ordinaries bid for him, as playhouses for a poet, and the master pray him aloud to name what dish he affects, which must be buttered shrimps, and those that drink till no mouth else will drink to his, as being thy goodly president mouth of all the board. Do you not gull one? Odds my life, do you think it? You shall have a cast commander. Can but get in credit with a glover or a spurrier, for some two pair of either's wear aforehand. Will, by most swift posts, dealing, but with him, arrive at competent means to keep himself his punk and naked boy, in excellent fashion, and be admired for it. Will the doctor teach this? He will do more, sir. When your land is gone, as men of spirit hate to keep earth long in a vacation, when small money is stirring and ordinary suspended till the term, he'll show a perspective, where on one side you shall behold the faces, and the persons of all sufficient young heirs in town, whose bonds are current for commodity. On the other side, the merchant's forms, and others that without help of any second broker, who would expect a share, will trust such parcels, in the third square, the very street and sign where the commodity dwell, and does but wait to be delivered, be it pepper, soap, hops, or tobacco, oatmeal, woad, or cheese, all which you may so handle, to enjoy to your own use, and never stand obliged. If faith, is he such a fellow? Why, Nab here knows him, and then for making matches for rich widows, young gentlemen, heirs, the fortunest man. He sent to, far and near, all over England to have his counsel and to know their fortunes. God's will, my sister shall see him. I'll tell you, sir, what he did tell me of Nab. It's a strange thing. By the way, uh, you must eat no cheese, Nab. It breeds melancholy, and that same melancholy breeds worms, but pass it. Uh, he told me, honest Nab, here was ne'er at taverns, but once it is life. Truth, and no more I was not. And then he was so sick. Could he tell you that, too? And how should I know it? In troth we had been a-shooting, and had a piece of fat ram-mutton to supper, that lay so heavy on my stomach. And he has no head to bear any wine, for what with the noise of the fiddlers and care of his shop, for he dares keep no servants. My head did so ache. And he was fain to be brought home, the doctor told me, and then a good woman. Yes, faith, she dwells in sea coal lane, did cure me with sodden ale and pellitory of the wall, cost me but two pence. I had another sickness was worse than that. Aye, that was with the grief thou tookest for being ceased at eighteen pence for the water-work. In truth, and it was like to have cost me almost my life. Thy hair went off? Yes, sir, t'was done for spite. Nay, so says the doctor. Prithee, tobacco boy, go fetch my sister. I'll see this learned boy before I go, and so shall she. Sir, he is busy now. But if you have a sister to fetch hither, perhaps your own pains may command her sooner, and he by that time will be free. I go. Exit. Drugger, she's thine, the damask. Exit Abel. Subtle and I must rustle for her. Aside. Come on, Master Dapper. You see how I turn clients here away, to give your cause dispatch. Have you performed the ceremonies were enjoined you? Yes, of the vinegar, and the clean shirt. Tis well. That shirt may do you more worship than you think. Your aunt's a fire, but that she will not show it to have a sight of you. Have you provided for her grace's servants? Yes, here are six score Edward shillings. Good. And an old Harry's sovereign. Very good. And three James shillings, and an Elizabeth groat, just twenty nobles. Oh, you are too just. I would you had had the other noble in Murray's. I have some Philip and Mary's. Aye, those same are best of all. Where are they? Hark, the doctor. Enter subtle, disguised like a priest of fairy, with a stripe of cloth, in a feigned voice. Is yet her grace's cousin come? He is come. And is he fasting? Yes. And hath cried, hum? 
Thrice you must answer. Thrice. And as oft buzz? If you have, say. I have. Then to her cuz, hoping that he hath vinegared his senses as he was bid, the fairy queen dispenses by me this robe, the petticoat of fortune, which that he straight put on she doth importune. And though to fortune near be her petticoat, yet nearer is her smock, the queen doth note. And therefore even of that a piece she hath sent, which being a child to wrap him in was rent, and praise him for a scarf he now will wear it, with as much love as then her grace did tear it, about his eyes. They blind him with the rag. To show he is fortunate and trusting unto her to make his state throw away all worldly pelf about him which that he will perform she doth not doubt him she need not doubt him sir alas he has nothing but what he will part with all as willingly upon her grace's word throw away your purse as she would ask it handkerchiefs and all he throws away as they bid him she cannot bid that thing but he'll obey if you have a ring about you cast it off or a silver seal at your wrist her grace will send her fairies here to search you, and therefore deal directly with her highness. If they find you conceal a mite, you are undone. Truly, there's all. All what? My money, truly. Keep nothing that is transitory about you. Aside to saddle. Bid Dole play some music. Dole place on the cittern within. Look, the elves are come to pinch you if you tell not the truth. Advise you. They pinch him. Oh, I have a paper with the spur isle in it. T T. They knew it, they say. He has more yet. T T T T. Aside to saddle. In the other pocket. T T T T T T T T T T. They must pinch him, or he will never confess. They say. They pinch him again. Oh, oh. Nay, pray you hold. He is her grace's nephew. T T T. What care you? Good faith, you shall care. Deal plainly, sir, and shame the fairies. Show you are innocent. By this good light I have nothing. Tee, 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 do, ta. He does equivocate, she says. Tee, tee, do, tee, 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 do, tee, ta. And swears by the light when he is blinded. By this good dark I have nothing but a half-crown of gold about my wrist that my love gave me, and a leaden heart I wore since she forsook me. I thought was something. And would you incur your aunt's displeasure for these trifles? Come, I had rather you had thrown away twenty half-crowns. Takes it off. You may wear your leaden heart still. Enter Doll hastily. How now? What news, Doll? Yonder's your knight, Sir Mammon. Odds lid, we never thought of him till now. Where is he? Here, hard by, he is at the door. And you are not ready now? Doll, get his suit. Exit, Doll. You must not be sent back. Oh, by no means. What shall we do with the same puffin here now he's on the spit? Why lay him back a while with some device? Re enter doll with faces clothes. Titi, 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 would her grace speak with me? I come. Help doll. Knocking without. Speaks through the keyhole. Who's there? Sir Epicure. My Nash is in the way. Please you to walk three or four turns. But till his back be turned, and I am for you. Quick, doll. Her grace commends her kindly to you, Master Dapper. I long to see her grace. She now is set at dinner in her bed, and she has sent you from her own private trencher a dead mouse and a piece of gingerbread to be merry withal and stay your stomach lest you be faint with fasting. Yet if you could hold out till she saw you, she says, it would be better for you. Sir, he shall hold out, and twere this two hours for her highness. I can assure you that. We will not lose all we have done. He must not see nor speak to anybody till then. For that will put, sir, a stay in its mouth. Of what? Of gingerbread. Make you it fit. He that hath pleased her grace thus far shall not now crinsel for a little. Gape, sir, and let him fit you. They thrust a gag of gingerbread in his mouth. Where shall we now bestow him? In the privy. Come along, sir. I now must show you fortune's privy lodgings. Are they perfumed? And his bath ready? All. 
only the fumigation somewhat strong speaking through the keyhole sir epicure i am yours sir by and by exeunt with dapper end of act three